What's up, guys? This is Bobby Douglas, and this is just the second half of the Minnesota-Wisconsin game where we're taking a look at Minnesota big man Daniel Oturu. Had a very productive first half offensively. Defensively left a little bit to be desired, but I hope that improves as the second half gets underway here. And remember, we watched the full games here just to get a feel of a prospect's strengths and weaknesses as they reveal themselves in the game situation. I think this is better than watching just segmented highlights or scouting reports that only show certain aspects of games without any uh, context to where the game really is. So I think by watching a full game and watching a prospect's full performance, I think you train yourself to have a better eye in terms of evaluating prospects. And also you get to see um, how they act in game situations where you wouldn't necessarily get to see that in scouting reports or highlights. So with that said, let's get into the second half right here. I'm excited to get into it. And here we go. One victory tonight, Wisconsin's net rank. Um, mute it. There we go. And again, remember, he's going to be number 25 in the yellow. And so he's on Rovers again to start. Remember in the first half, Rovers pretty much dominated him in pick and pop situations. I think he hit two or three threes just because Oturu couldn't really get back to the three-point line. Right there, that's a good job uh, hedging. And then uh, Kalsher tagged Rovers. And then, so he was in a decent spot right there. So they're going to set a ball screen right here, pick and pop. I see what he does here. Good shot fake, and eh. I like the idea. Just the execution was a little bit off. Luckily, it didn't hurt him in any way. And here he is on Rivers again. Good job staying attached. Let's see if he gets a good box out here. Nothing really going on there. But that time he did a way better job just staying attached to Rivers. So right now I would like to, yeah, let's see what he does here. And again, if you're going to give him that much space, he's going to knock down the three. Has a nice looking jump shot. I think the form is solid. And you saw it right there. And again, if you're going to give him that much space, catch and shoot situations, he's going to knock it down. So again, I do think he could be a very solid pick and pop shooter, especially in and off the catch as well. I think that's a very... It's a very likely outcome for him in terms of his NBA skills. Here we go. He's going to be in the post, playing defense right there. Another really solid contest. And you grab the rebound as well. It's kind of funny. Good job stunting and recovering to Rubers. That time he went with a Rubers rolled instead of popped. And I think if he had popped, he might have gotten an open look from three. But Ooh, that's a cheap foul. I'm not sure I necessarily agree with that, but. You know, again, that's his third foul right now, and so that's kind of tough to grasp. So that's that, that's kind of not a smart way to pick up your third foul with, with so much time left in the second half. But Ooh, yeah, right there. He just fell asleep on defense, but he recovered really well with that block, obviously. But he did allow that backdoor cut to happen in the first place. But again, you saw the uh, the length that he has. So even after he getting beat on the backdoor right there, still managed to get the block rather easily, too. Yeah, again, that was a pretty clean block, too. Nice job from Oturu to recover there. So right there, probably should have stayed a little bit longer. Honestly, at that point, I would have just called a switch because Oturu was hedging, and then he was worried about the pop, so he had to get back, and then he ultimately left an open floater. Right there, yeah. Good job drawing a foul. Down low right there, and let's see.
And here he was, just the pressure release right there. And again, they like running DHOs off of him, just him getting in a high post, and then he sets like a handoff screen for that guard usually, which is usually Marcus Carr. So again, I think he's pretty comfortable operating on the perimeter offensively. Defensively, it's a different question, obviously. But offensively, I think he's pretty solid. Again, right there, another solid contest, and he goes and hustles, get that, gets that rebound as well. So that time he did a much better job um, timing. Timing right there, good job staying uh, on the ground as much as he could right there. But on that pick and roll right there, or that pick and pop, he did a better, way better job timing it out. So he was he played that perfectly where he guarded the guarded the driver, and then the second his uh, teammate got back to recover, he immediately sprinted out to Rivers and pretty much shut down that entire action. That was probably the best pick and roll, pick and pop coverage I've seen out of him uh, thus far. Um, he's out right here, so I will skip. About four minutes. Comes back in 54, 52. Here we go. Again, he's getting the high post. Looks like, yep, it's a typical off ball screen. It looked like a misdirection play. Um,. Again, nice job crashing the glass right there. The shot went in, but I like that he was already in position after coming out from the top of the key right there. Again, so now it's, yeah, again, another really good job right there. Read that perfectly. Let's see how he defends in the post. Right there, got caught up in the air. That's not a great play. Again, He's not a guy who really needs to be jumping a whole lot because I do think he has a really good standing reach and just overall feel for the ball without jumping. So I wish he would just not jump a whole lot prematurely because I think he has the ability to jump after um, his man jumps and then still get block shots and things like that. Right, that, that's a really smooth turnaround jumper. And if he can add that to his game, he did a lot of that at Minnesota, but if he can really get that down in the NBA, he becomes a much more valuable player in my estimation. And again, that time he just knew the switch was coming. And then again, now he's starting to figure out the pick and roll. The first half was pretty ugly this time. Again, without Rubers on the floor, and he, when he's not guarding Rubers or a pick and pop big, he's a lot better in pick and roll just because there's not really a threat of the shooter. And so we've seen that without Rubers on the floor, he's, been, he's done a lot better in uh, screen coverages. And again, right there, look how long it took him to get back into the play. You know, I do think conditioning is a little bit of an issue just based on the body language. Yeah, you can see, look at, I mean, look at Minnesota right there. Three guys all just walked up the floor. I mean, that's not only on him, but still, it didn't look good. It was a two on five. And you can tell, I think Oturu is pretty gassed right now. Just comes out of screen. Good job connecting in a lower body, and that wasn't a really good pass. He also got held. Right there, that's a that's a very good loose ball win. Did it doesn't get credit for the rebound right there, but that's a really awesome hustle play. Especially for somebody who looks really tired. <laughs> like that's a really good play. Uh, we got a media time out here right now, so I will skip this. And then he's looking for a post touch right now. Nothing really going on. You got travel here. Yep. Might be a fun this game. I've been I was looking for a Daniel O'Toole game for the longest time, and I finally found one on the Minnesota Minnesota's actual YouTube account. It was a replay of this Wisconsin game from February, so I was pumped that I found that because I couldn't find. There are some schools where it's just impossible to find full length games, pretty much. 
So right there, that was a travel on Rubers, but Otua did a nice job just moving his feet. Got a little bit, I think he crossed it maybe once or twice, but you know the movement overall was solid there. But uh, there are just some schools that are just impossible to find full-length games for. Uh, Minnesota was one of them until I found this one. And then Stanford, I'm trying to find Tyrell Terry full games. I can't find any of them. I've been to all over the internet. I've been on YouTube. I've been all over the place. I cannot find a single full-length Stanford game. So if you guys, you know, if you guys want to help me out and maybe look for one, see if you can, see what you guys can find. I can't find anything. But luckily, we found this one of Oturu. Going to bang down low. Again, right there, probably uh, looked like he was trying to initiate contact. Probably should have just gone straight up with it. Right here, good job moving his feet. Good job staying down. It's a tough make from Rubers, but overall, I like the defensive effort right there. You got a wet spot or something here, so. So he's setting up. Nothing really going on there. And here we go. Let's see what he does here. Couldn't really get anything going that way. And again, he's not a guy. I mean, this probably goes without saying, but he's not a guy who's going to, like, you know, break you down off the perimeter and blow by you off the dribble. He's not that type of player. So again, since 35 is in, he's been taking Rubers. And uh, I think that's Micah Potter that Oturu's guarding. So again, I think it's a lot easier of a matchup for him. And we got a foul right here. So I'll skip ahead. Now Oturu is on. Rover since that uh, other center from Minnesota went out. So let's see if they attack him. That time wasn't really anything to look at there. I, guess I do like that he just sets three screens in a row, or set up to set three screens in a row. That time, good job boxing out. Micah Potter knew exactly where he needed to be. And he got to the block. Oh, that, that was a good backdoor from, uh, I don't know who that is. That could have been a, yeah, there we go. That's a foul. Um, good take overall right there. Again, just kind of the floor opened up for him a little bit right there. Hopefully get a replay of it. Um, but yeah, I like that drive from Otuba. Again, just a floor opened up. We'll watch him shoot two free throws here. Got that one to go. Got that one as well. So I think he's what five of six, four or five from the line in this game. So had a pretty nice night shooting from the free throw line right there, or tonight. So so right there again, they just pretty much uh, they full on switched for a second, and then Otura got back to Rivers, and now let's see what he does here. Again, he's really good at just using his arms to just create almost like a bubble for his opponent on the post. And right there, you saw him do a nice job just contesting again. Rubers missed a shot, and he ultimately got the rebound as well. Jeez, Minnesota's just lighting him up today.
Good job from Otur again, getting good position on that board. See, so he's in the post again. One on one, let's see what he does here. Ooh, that's tough. So he has four fouls right now, I think. I want to say two of them have been kind of cheapies. But that's just sometimes what happens. Um, he's out for a while here, so I'll skip ahead to 113.41. He comes back in. So we got a big jump right here. I think there's probably around, yeah, just under the under four media timeout. So good pin down right there. Let's see if it results in an open three. It did, but. Didn't make it. Otuwa set a good screen down there, though. I do think he is a really good uh, screener, especially off the ball on the blocks. I think he's going to be a really good uh, pin-down screener, you know, things like that. I think he'll be very solid. In. Again, you can see he's not really getting abused a whole lot more um, in pick and roll. I think NBA teams will take advantage of that a lot more, it's just like what we saw in the first half. But in this half, I, it looks like he's kind of figured out Wisconsin, what Wisconsin's trying to do, and he's adjusted well. With these extended uh, stunts, and then got a foul here, so I'll skip this. I'm gonna choose on Micah Potter. So right there, it looked like a, it looked like he wanted to switch and then Carr didn't. So I'm not really sure how I feel about that. Right there again, maybe probably should have gone up a little bit higher. I think he could have jumped in that situation. But again, I don't mind him not jumping, just because I do think he has a pretty solid standing reach and he has decent enough instincts and hops to jump second and still get his hands on a lot of. Shots right there. Good job coming off the DHO and setting a good screen. Gave 22 a good open shot. And here we go. And right there, he maybe probably should have switched that. Um, right there, he saw a really good block. Again, I like where he usually blocks his shots. They're usually He goes straight for the ball and trying, instead of trying to meet players at the rim. I really do like that. And he got another block right there. Oh, did he get called for a foul? Wow. That's tough. But yeah, so that's the end of the video, actually. Because he fouls out right here. But again, he goes when he blocks shots, he usually goes straight for the ball instead of trying to meet people at the rim. And I think that's a really good uh, habit to have because I think you could get a lot of deflections and a lot of steals that way as well. And so I think that that's um, indicative of a pretty solid shot blocker as well. So with that, he fouled out to a standing ovation. And I'll pause the video here. And that pretty much wraps it up for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown of Daniel Oturu. I really like him as a prospect. Again, I have him in the late first round of my, of my big board as it currently stands. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, it would be great if you can like it. And if you enjoyed the content of this channel, please subscribe. That really helps me out. So, yeah, with that, I will see you guys tomorrow for another breakdown. And thanks for watching.